Hey, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. So today, I'm going to do a rambling Russ here. This is kind of about channels on YouTube. And I've kind of got a couple different topics about it that I'm talking about. So I've kind of made up my little cheat sheets, little organizational things. Hopefully, I won't ramble too much or go back and repeat something again. I've done that before. Sometimes it's not easy going from start to finish nonstop like... Uh, Roy Underhill always did. But that's what I'm determined to do on this channel, and so far, I ain't changing it. So, anyway, so let's talk about YouTube channels. I, I First off, let me say that I want to recommend some channels, so let me get that out of the way real quick here. And there's two channels I want to recommend, or, or subjects, I should say. Uh, the first one is a guy I just found this morning, actually. Uh, he found me. He started commenting me about my channel and said that he just loved it. And he went on in several comments and several different videos. So the, he is actually watching a lot of my videos. Uh, good luck. There's 195 of them. You're going to be at this for a while. But I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I did making them. Uh, but his name, his channel is Slow and Experience. And like always, uh, when he made his comments, he never talked about his channel per se. But I went out and looked at it, and I have to tell you, this is one of the best channels I have seen in a long time. He has, uh, first off, he's been doing videos for about uh, seven months, I think. And he has like 30 video, thirty plus videos out there. And he has only 33 subscribers. It just blows my mind. And it's not that I'm saying that's bad or that's good. I'm just shocked that that's, that's all he has at this point. And so anyway, I wanted to mention him because if you like my channel, you're going to love his channel, quite honestly. And, and I just dare you. Go out there, find his channel. I'll leave a link in the description. But find his channel and pick one video. Anyone. And I just defy you to not be able to watch a second one and third one and so on. I guarantee you, he has such great videos. Not only the content, but his quality of making his videos is just astounding. And his writing skits sometimes to do them. He's awesome. So anyway, check him out and you'll see what I'm talking about. So uh, I just wanted to make sure I recommended him. The second thing is, is there's a channel out there called BevCan. Uh, I'd never heard of them before. I just ran across one of them the other day and they had this series in there called The Art of Woodworking. It's like eight videos in there so far and I suspect there'll be more as time goes on. It's from this one guy that's made all these in different subjects. Um, I actually like these particular videos, and they're very informative. If you like, enjoy just easy watching sometimes. Uh, he Like the one, for example, he talks about planes and goes to the, what the different planes really are and which ones you kind of need when you think, oh, I'm bored. I'm. But he also talks about the history and the evolution of how they went from point A to point B in their development. And it's actually very informative and enjoyable to watch him, even though some of the information is old to me. Some of it was new, and it was just enjoyable. So I'm going to plan on watching all eight, and if he comes out with more, I'll be watching more on this series. So if you want, go find The Art of Woodworking on BevCam, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Just try one of them. Anyway, it's up to you. I just thought that I wanted to get some of these recommendations off my chest. I'm going to try to do more of that. I've done that in the past a few times. So, but keep that in mind. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the type of channels that there are out there, at least in my mind. And that is that they go from one spectrum to the other. On the one end, BevCam is probably a very classic example of it. And that's the professional content uh, creator. And some of them, that's what they do. They want to make money at it. They make money at it, and they're doing it. And then on the other end is what I call the professional uh, viewer. And this person here, Andy, more about him later, but that I kind of put him in that category. He doesn't create any videos. He is active in, it seems to me, he's kind of active in leaving comments. And quite honestly, I really like the guy. But he's at the other end of the spectrum. He just does comments. And he has a very simple channel. Uh, but you can actually learn from these channels. But before I say that, first let me say that the size of the channel isn't really what I'm talking about here. It's the kind of work you do, whether you do only the one 
or all the way on the other end of that spectrum and I'm kind of in the middle I do create videos I also watch videos I tend to watch more videos than I make if you know what I'm saying I spend more time on it but uh, most of us are probably in that range somewhere in between uh, even if it's only been one or two videos or 800 videos, we're still kind of in between. We don't make a living at it. I, myself, I don't even care to. I, if I don't make a dime out of this, it's fine. I'm having too much fun. I think it should be illegal to pay me, really. But shh, I'll tell them that. They'll probably never pay me. So, anyway, the types of channels is kind of the theme of what I've been thinking about. And I just kind of wanted to try to understand that a little bit. Remember, actually, you can learn from every viewer anybody that makes a comment on my channel or if I leave a comment or if I'm reading the comments in a video that I watched and somebody's comment in particular catches my eye I always go look at that channel and see their home channel see what's on there if they've made videos I take a quick look at their videos it's amazing what you can learn from somebody even if they don't create videos though um, like Andy I, I looked at his subscription list and I was quite impressed with some of the people who has the same people he watches that I do. But he had some that I'd never heard of before, and I started checking them out. So it's a good place to find new videos. It's from these, these people, too. So I always, anybody that leaves a comment on my channel or when they first subscribe and a notification is sent to me, I always take a look at their channel to get curious to see who they are and what they're doing. And I have a lot of people that are more on this end of the scale watching my channel, I think, than are on this end of the scale. So, but I just thought that was interesting about where are they? And so, you know, just curious, where are you in on that scale? And it doesn't matter where you're on that scale, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're having fun and you're doing what you like on YouTube, that's really what it's about. But don't forget, you can learn from people like this, too. Just check out their home pages sometimes. There may not be any videos there, but you may be surprised what other information you can come with uh, that you can get out of that. Sometimes the discussions alone are entertaining. So you might try doing that. So anyway, that's the different types of channels in my mind. I just want to mention that because you're going to see me mentioning that, uh, the professional content provider or what I call And sometimes I'll refer to somebody as a professional viewer. This is what I'm talking about. So anyway, the last thing I kind of want to talk about here is comments and comment edits in particular. And yes, this includes using the like and dislike button, which is kind of its own subject, really. But when you come to comments and you have what is called comment etiquette, I, I, I had this feeling that it does that it's actually alive and well in YouTube, but I don't really understand it. I probably do some bad things on YouTube now and then, not even realizing that I'm doing it. Uh, we're talking about such things like the dislike and the like button, what comments are annoying, what comments people like to read, and as well as the viewer himself. Um, what is trolling exactly? I've, I, I'm really very confused about the exact definition of trolling. I might actually be trolling every once in a while, technically, if the definition of trolling is what I think it is. Because I'll mention to somebody on the channel a lot of times in a comment after watching the video that you should go watch my channel about the um, shop vac setup. And you'll see how to use my easy emptying bucket is actually, if you incorporate that into yours, it'll probably work a little better. And some people, I think, consider that trolling. Even though I'm not pushing my channel or anything, I don't care if I get more than 50 views or even 10. So I'm already happy with what I have. Uh, and if it grows to a large amount, that's fine. But I really like to interact with people that watch my channel. And a lot of my videos actually come from people that view my channel or comments that are made on other channels or the actual videos that I see. And he's a good example of that. What really turned me on to him completely was he left a comment on one of my channels. And we conversation back and forth. It was about the workbench mobility where I put the hand crank on the end and just used four bolts to bolt it in place. And he said I should have done that as a slide in. And I originally had mentioned that, yeah, I thought about it, but it just didn't seem practical on mine. So I haven't done it. And he just encouraged me to do it again in his own way and I thought I got to thinking about what he was saying and I have to tell you uh, he's right and that's and 
I want to thank Andy. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to put out a new video. I wasn't going to redo my, revisit my mobility on the workbench, on those hand cranes and how they mount, but he's actually convinced me that I should, and I'm going to, and I'm hopefully he'll be approve of my new version, uh, because it's his fault that I'm doing it this way. So anyway, all I can say is, Andy, thanks. Uh, you helped me have another video, which I assume that some people actually appreciate some of my videos. So I stay tuned. We'll bring that out. And once you see it, you can thank Andy yourself if you want. Just go leave a comment on his homepage. Uh, so anyway, the, the idea behind these comments sometimes is very confusing to me. And what is trolling that? I'd love to hear other people's opinion. I sometimes will start a comment and a conversation back and forth two or three times with somebody about something I don't agree with even. Is that bad etiquette? I mean, I'm sorry, but if I see something that I flat don't agree with, and I know it's wrong in my mind, I don't understand it even, uh, I'll say something. Sometimes I ask the question because I don't understand it instead, and once they explain it better, then I go, oh yeah, okay. Um, but I ha actually have a, a passion at this point for bad information on the internet. And if somebody out there does a video and I see it and the information is just outrageously wrong, look out. You're going to get to show me if you know what I'm talking about if you follow my channel because I just hate seeing that sort of thing. So is that bad or is that good? Or comments that aren't necessarily saying, oh, you did a great video. Keep up the good work because not all my videos say that. I, In fact, I tend to not do just that. I tend to say something about a video to show that I really thought about the whole video as a whole. Um, rather than just the simple generic um, answering. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of guys out there, people, not guys, a lot of people out there that that's all they do. Every single comment is great job you're doing. I really appreciate it. And I do sometimes go look at their videos, I mean at their channels to see who they are and what they're doing. Um, and I, sometimes I don't understand why they somebody does nothing but leaves those kind of comments all the time. It's etiquette. I don't mind it. It gives me a boost when I have somebody that seems to appreciate what I do in the video. And I'm sure that if you do videos, you would too. So, or maybe you just like to encourage that because you like the videos. And I, I can appreciate that too. But I really don't know, understand the total etiquette of all of that. And... I'm not very good at that sort of thing anyway. So anyway, talking about this one more thing, the like and dislike button. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. There was another one of my viewers out there, or people that I subscribe to out there that was doing, I watched videos constantly, and they were putting at that time a lot of videos out. And I noticed on his like and dislikes, he was getting two dislikes, two. Boom, boom, boom. One video after the other, like eight or ten in a row. And I've noticed that. And I kind of made a comment back to him laughingly saying, you know, what? Did you make a couple of old girlfriends mad at you or something? You know? And I just thought it was weird how they were leaving a negative uh, dislike on there, but they wouldn't comment. And I will tell you that I have left, I have hit the dislike button once or twice. But if I do, I also try to make a comment. Now, the only thing I don't do is I don't say, hey, I hit the dislike button and this is why. But I'm going to change as of today. I am now, if I don't like something about their video, and I may even like the video overall, but I may hit that dislike button for a very good reason. If I ever hit that dislike button, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to tell them why I don't like, what it is I don't like, and the fact that I did hit that button. To me, sorry about that. Um... To me, that's just, it's really kind of important to do that sort of thing. So, anyway, the like and dislikes. I think that you really should, if you're going to do a dislike, you should really say so and say why. And as long as you do that, I have no problem with anybody saying a dislike. Because then I can kind of look at it and think about it and give me a chance to say, well, I can do it better so that I don't have the dislike. He's right. Then again, I might say, <laughs> just ignore it so it happens and I know there's some of both so anyway maybe if my channel gets busier which I hope it doesn't I do like the small group of people that I know and I talk to and some of them come and they go and they talk for a while back and forth then I may not hear from them for a while which to me is always entertaining 
Uh, but I do enjoy interacting and giving comments, not only on mine, but also on other channels. I do a lot of commenting. So some of them, I'm sure, look at it and go, oh, God, there he is again talking about something. So, because I also tend to ramble on when I make comments, too. Mine are now sometimes very long, but more importantly, I keep coming back again and again and saying something. And a lot of guys just want to make one comment and then they want to move on. So, I don't know what that etiquette is. So, if you had to enlighten me about uh, comment etiquette, I'd love to start a comprehensive conversation about that out there to try to understand it. What is right and what is wrong? Who determines what is right or wrong and that sort of thing. So, keep it in mind. Your input is definitely appreciated. Whew. I'm glad to get all this off my chest. I feel better now. Don't be afraid to go visit these items. They are worth it. If you like my channel, I suspect you may like both of these too. So, but most importantly, I do want to thank you for coming by and staying to the end of this if you did. <laughs> that was probably tough to do. Um, if you like this video or you learned something new, hit that like button. That always is helpful. And if you do hit that dislike, let me know why. So, anyway, most importantly though, thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it, and please come back again. Thanks. We'll see you again very soon.